we do so because these are uh, very serious constitutional issues raised by the learned council is that this court can only operate within the confines of its jurisdiction. Your jurisdiction is defined by Section 8 of the Magistrate's Court Act. And because of the jurisdictional issue, I'll start from that. That section limits your ability to hear, entertain, and or determine 8 of the Magistrate's Court Act 2015. That for good order, you can only hear or entertain and determine issues relating to alleged violation of fundamental rights and freedoms limited to Article 25A and B. Article 25A and B of the Constitution. so that with a lot of empathy and sympathy, anything outside that falls out of your jurisdiction and a proper application on the basis thereof is vested in the High Court by dint of Article 1653 of the Constitution. Having said so, the officers of the Director of Public Prosecutions or say differently, the mandate of the Office of the Director of Public Prosecutions is exercised directly by the Director of Public Prosecutions under Article 1571, or in terms of delegated authority by officers appointed, including the Deputy Director of Public Prosecutions, we have two of them before you this morning, and the signer, if that were an English word, of the charges before you, the approver of the charges, Mr. Murugu, who sits before you this morning. To that extent, the charges were properly reviewed and approved. And the validity of the charges, as far as the existence of a substantive holder of the office, does not arise. For clarity, the departure of Mr. Nordin Haji from the office of the DPP did not invalidate the authority of the officers of the ODP. As correctly noted by Mr. Nubi, the authority of the officers of the DPP is granted by the Constitution and the law. The law being the Office of the Director of Public Institutions <coughs> Act 2012 and does not arise from Mr. Nordin Haji or the holder of the office. On the issue of the alleged violation of constitutional rights, including holding any of the accused pastor or any of the suspects, sorry, before they have taken charges, in communicado, when we sympathize again, those are issues that this court cannot listen to because you lack jurisdiction, and with that, you have to down your toes. And finally, the most important question is whether or not you can reject these charges because of the invalidity of the charges to, to it duplicity. Mr. Ndubi has not described to you how the charges before you are bad for duplicity. Nothing at all, uh, apart from the statement that the charges are uh, bad for duplicity, has been told to you. In response, the charges before you are founded are, are on known provisions of the penal code, constitutional to, uh, to say the least, none of them has been declared unconstitutional. And to that extent, you have proper charges based on the law, a law known in Kenya as required under Article 52 of the Constitution. <coughs> Further, under Article 89.5 of, uh, uh, sorry, Section 89.5 of the Criminal Procedure Code, 89.5, 
which is the only provision this court would, uh, would invoke to reject charges. The only reason you could reject charges is that the charges do not disclose an offense known in law. <coughs> Count 1 is founded on section 89.1 of the penal code. Count 2 on section 308.1 of the penal code. Count 3 on section 511 as read with 510 of the Public Order Act. Count 4, which may be the newest of the charges, is under Section 4A of the Narcotic Drugs and Psychotropic Substances Act as amended in 2022. And finally, Count 5 is brought under Section 771, which has been subject of constitutional uh, litigation prior. And the court upheld that that Section 773 is constitutional within the mm -hmm. Similar to Section 5, which also has been subject of litigation and has been found to be sound. To that extent, you have proper charges before you. But finally, even if 